Some questions. And goddamn. <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Working Class Music. I'm one of your hosts, Jason. Uh, and I'm Xander. Hey guys. He's extra tall, Xander. <laughs> I'm Big Xander. I'm Big Xander. Big C. <laughs> Gonna make the poor black man sit in a small seat. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm old. I want the backrest. Speaking of back, I'm back from now. Oh yeah, dude. How was that? I've got some thoughts, and that's why we're doing this video. So uh, I decided to go out to Nam, mm -hmm. and when I was out there, since this is for Sweetwater's Content Creator Month, I decided I'd get one of the DGIs that they have and just film some uh, B-roll for this video. Okay. So cool. all the B-roll that you see is done on that. On the new DGI. That's yeah. cool. Okay. Sweet. Thank you, Sweetwater. Yeah. Like other than that, Nam was uh, Nam was amazing. Yeah. Nam was really good. I know there's a lot we're going to talk about on it. So. So I remember we as a channel went out there. The first year we yeah, were doing first it? Year we did yeah, this. we went all in. And it was like right after COVID, like everyone had just got their first shots or whatever. And everyone there was talking about how dead it was. And a lot of people I've been talking to, in, you know, who are also in the industry or whatever, skipped out this year because they just assumed it was going to be boring again this year. Was it like that? Was it a boring time or like? Oh, uh, no. Out of the three I've been to since this channel started, this is by far the best one. And coincidentally, oh, like it's the biggest one. Okay. Um, it was definitely a lot bigger than the one we went to. There were definitely a lot of vendors there, a buttload of vendors. More showed up than usual? or I would say time? more showed up than the last time. That's cool. That's so good. yeah. People are coming back. Yes. Yes. Back so there the were, there were a ton of people there, like friends, vendors, you know, saw a whole lot. The earth is healing. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, uh, that's good. That's cool. Awesome. So, okay. So, what did you see there? What was, what was like your favorite guitar that you saw there? Like cool offsets that you like, stuff like that. The cool offsets. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the cool offsets. So, uh, let me tell you the story about the Larry Carlton, the new Sire Larry Carlton J5. I've been seeing those. So yes. the Sire stuff is interesting to me. They're really gunning for the Squire market. Yeah. <laughs> They're really good features for the money. They're awesome. Yeah, th they are. But Here's the, the funny thing. So when I get to the Sire booth, I'm walking around and I'm just like, hey, can anyone like, you know, help me with this guitar? Yeah. And then this guy turns around and he's like, I can help you. It's my guitar. And it's freaking Larry Carlton. It's the man himself. Yeah. That's so that that was pretty cool. I got to play that. I remember reading about him in guitar magazines as like a kid. He's been yeah. A little legend, dude. He, like, he is a legend. And like for his guitar, $600 Jazz Master. And the thing that's cool about it it has a lot of the same colors from the American Professional 2. Oh. They're identical, but you don't get a rhythm circuit and you have this Duesenberg meets Jazzmaster type vibrato. Okay. As a casual Jazzmaster fan, I'm saying that's not a deal breaker. I want to get my hands on it yeah. more so because I think the little that I got to play it, yeah. It was great, okay. but I would like to compare it back to back to another jazz master. Yeah, see, this is interesting. We need to look into these guys yeah. some more. Sire, hit us up. Yeah, but other than that, there was a Ukraine-based company, Valiant Guitars. I'm so interested in Valiant, dude. Agufish is all over yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He posted something for them recently that was yeah. just crazy. Well, they were at NAMM and they were super awesome. They hit me up and had me come and try their Jupiter model, and they had the Jupiter in a variety of finishes. I think okay. my favorite was like the coral slash shell pink. All right. One of the cool things, and it's just a quality of life feature that I didn't realize was super awesome. Yeah. But on the upper bout on where you have the normal rhythm circuit, mm -hmm. it has like the in phase, out of phase, but it has it written oh. in small font, which switch does what? It helps so much. You don't think about it, but like it, it's so silly to have to like explain the controller on your guitar when you hand it to somebody. Yeah, <laughs> so that was cool. And they played and sound awesome. Like I know you're the humbucker person, sure. but this, to me was the best humbucking offset that I've played cool. in on. the short time that I got to play it. Yeah. We may be getting those on the show. I did a little talking. I'd, so I'd love to get them in here, man. It's a miracle that they're still standing. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, but everything I've seen posted from them is really interesting and cool. Looks top notch. And it's a combination of features that I think a lot of guitar players can just work with. You know what I mean? And last but not least, I got to give our friends Rick and his wife at Pure Salem a shout out. Cause Dude. I stopped by their booth <laughs> and they were awesome. Didn't get to play a lot of them, but I saw a lot of 
the more interesting oh. offsets in person. So, but that's one of the cool things about now. We've been talking to Rick for like years, and mm. but this is the first time you met him. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, we, we've just made a new connection like that. That's that's cool. I really like their stuff. Mm -hmm. So what about the tech? You talked about the camera you used. Oh yeah, the tech stuff. Yeah. As a pro audio person, that's where I was impressed the most. The Sennheiser booth, there's footage that I took there, and it's weird because you can't hear it. Yeah. Because obviously it's their new headphones, the HD 490s. Right, how do you mic up headphones? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. They had two different kind of muffs. Cool. I'm a big muff fan. Yes, you are. <laughs> they had two different kinds of muffs, basically producing and mixing style. But the thing that impressed me the most was the Neumann plugin that it comes with. Okay. And basically what it does is rather than you going out and having to listen to your mixes in cars or other various spaces, this plugin simulates that so you can listen to it in your headphones like it tunes it to different yeah simulated settings yeah it's weird to describe but i remember having them on my ears and i was impressed that's it okay. if it sounds good it sounds good yeah. don't worry about how it was made <laughs> the other cool thing that i saw was uh the teenage engineering booth i think you would have loved this they had the ko2 like set up as an arcade, oh. and that was pretty cool. I love that company. I actually bought their limited edition Street Fighter and Mega Man ones, and I still don't know how to use them. Yeah. <laughs> but they're so cool. <laughs> so, yeah. I had fun there. There were a lot of people there. Their yeah. booth was like retro arcade meets the Apple store. It's wild, their aesthetic, and it's it's perfect. It's that retro futurist stuff. I'm here for it. I love yeah. it, man. That was all the tech then. Um, what about pedals? Yeah. <laughs> I saw some pedals. I have seen seen some things. Yeah. As far as the pedals, surprisingly, I didn't really check out a lot of pedals. However, it's Boss's anniversary. But yeah, I went and checked out their booth and I got to see some pedals that I've really, really been interested in, the DM-101 and the RV-200. And not only that, but like, Boss, they were super awesome. Like, yeah. you would think for a company as big as they are, you know, it'd be like, oh, oh yes, yeah, whatever. whatever. But no, they were super chill. Love them. They were cool. That's cool. It's funny. I don't know if this is just part of aging as a guitarist, but I'm liking Boss stuff more and more. I think it's because my main pedal for a long time was just my DS1. And it's all I used for distortion into my 60s Fender basement. <laughs> and it mm. sounded great for my punk rock stuff. But I think because of that, I always just thought of them as cheap and like not good. And it's the opposite. Like they have a something for almost everything. There are a lot of boutique pedals that are crazy these days. But if you just want a guitar sound, get a DS1, get a DD6 or 7 or whatever they're up to now, or the Space Echo. I've been using that Space Echo lately, oh my gosh. Yeah. So do they have anything new or crazy coming out? Um, they were celebrating just their 50th anniversary. They did yeah. have a few limited edition colors. I'm a sucker for that. But me being me, the DM-101 had my attention. So Tell me about that. I didn't get to play it, oh, yeah. um, but I've been curious about it. And is that the analog delay? Yes, oh, it is man. the bucket brigade delay. Yeah, I was very curious about that. If you would like to see that in anything, let us know down below. I'm torn between putting one of those or the uh, big space echo on my pedal board. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so you saw a lot of pedals. So it sounds like it was uh, good times. Mm -hmm. You were smoozing, you were seeing people. Who, what, what else did you do? Funny you say that. One, I fought the term for the longest, but I guess uh, since I attended one of these events, I can now accept it. There was the influencer party. 13K subscribers, you're one of them. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the influencer party, let's, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a crazy time. It was a party for influencers. Yes. Just people who have influence, I guess. Yes. Uh, <laughs> there were a lot of TikTok influencers. Okay. A lot of, you know, social media influencers and a lot of YouTube influencers. Were they uh, all guitar people or just music? Just influencers. Cool. Just influencers. Okay. Like, it wasn't solely just music. Obviously, the YouTube part was tech and music mm -hmm. in some kind of way. Anybody stand out from the crowd to you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman was there. Uh, from the Goonies. Yes. From the Goonies and the Lost Boys. Uh, he actually performed. He Did you perform get to talk to him? You get no, I didn't oh, get to okay. talk to him. Okay, right. Funny enough, though, it, it was funny because Ryan and I were hanging out and like Dovey Dawes comes up uh, like beforehand, I before the party, because they actually put him in charge of the party. Oh, good. And he was just like, that yeah. That man should be in charge of more things. Yeah. <laughs> And he was just like, yeah, we got Corey Feldman coming. Oh and I'm just my like, God. I'm like, all right, cool. And then, you know, he showed up. 
But yeah, no, it was a, it was a good time. A okay. lot of drinking, yeah. a shit ton of drinking. Yeah. Another thing was the party that I should mention. Another the party. after party, yeah. <laughs> that Earthquaker and Reverb hosted. I actually ended up talking to Jamie Stillman for a good little bit, and that That's meant the world to me. Sick. All right, so fun parties, good toys to play with. What was the highlight of the show? It was the best part of overall. My favorite part overall, funny enough, wasn't at Nam. It was at the Effector Market, which happened that Saturday. It was a separate event that a bunch of different vendors had, like Chase Bliss, Old Blood Noise, oh, Maris, okay. and they had their setup so that you can try their pedals. It was like Indie Nam. Yeah, pretty oh much. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and they had Black Bob in there. Like, to me, that was the coolest event possible because it was a much smaller event yeah. and I'm very anxiety ridden. You don't have to tell me I'm a punk for a reason, dude. Yeah. I want a small little club show. I don't want a big stadium. This is not my place. I want a little bar. I want a noisy band and I want a nice cold beer. And like the cool thing about it is it circles back to my favorite thing overall. The Effector Market to me was about the community more so than NAM was itself. <sighs> and just seeing so many of our friends. I got to meet Joe from Chase Bliss finally. Wow. And yeah, that that's was big for you. Yeah, that was that's <laughs> huge for me. That's big for me. And um hanging out with Nisabel was like that was the highlight. Yeah. She is amazing. That's beautiful. But yeah, it was it was great. It was great being in a smaller environment where everybody's getting along and you can tell it's about the community. Again, like we correspond with a lot of people online and when you have this whole relationship from like basically text and maybe videos and voice chats or like doing a podcast, but then when you meet them face to face and you're like rubbing elbows with them and buying beers for them. It's a, it's such a cool thing, man. It's, yeah. uh, we're, I'm so grateful to the community that embraced us when we first popped off and it's it's so cool, man. I wish I could have gone, you know? Yeah, but I mean, the community is a, such an important part for me personally. Yeah. And like seeing so many of our friends there and like even then that day, um, I finally met one of my friends and she is a phenomenal guitarist, but her name is Sam Crones and like she was just super awesome. Yeah, but overall, like, I'm going to say this, because I can't recall everybody I met, so we're just going to do a little photo collage okay. now. And back from the photo collage. Yeah, sounds like you had a great time, man. Any other highlights you need to point out? Final thoughts on this year's NAM. I thought it was awesome. It was a fun time, like seeing all of our friends and just being able to interact with them. It, everybody was busy, but you know, it was nice because I hadn't seen like Johnny from Oakland Guitars in a while, and he's oh, one yeah. of my best friends. It meant the world to me, and you know, to kind of feel embraced by our community. Yeah. And you know, meeting so many people again, like Andy Ferris, like finally got to meet him and did not realize he was that fucking tall. <laughs> How but tall? He's taller than you. That's scary. Yeah, so I'm standing next to him and Ryan Burke, and I'm just like, oh. Yeah. Actually, what was really cool too was hanging out with Mark Johnston, Signal Path, and Ambient Endeavors. Like, that was really cool, especially since I'm into the whole ambient ambient like no, stuff yeah. that they do so it was cool chatting with them it was it was a fun nam this nam gets an a oh my gosh well all right shoot thanks for sharing your story man sounds like that was the nam to go to i'm sorry that i missed out on it you know i would like to send the whole team there and if you would like to see us do that sort of thing subscribe to the patreon we got the new tier coming in at one dollar so if everybody who subscribes gives us a dollar we can quit our day jobs and just do this. So, you know, food for thought. If you can't afford that, no big deal. Like, subscribe, keep watching. That helps us out a lot too. Got the affiliate link at the bottom. You can get all the fun stuff that we talk about on the show from Sweetwater and other vendors. And uh, we get a little help from that and it helps us yeah. out a lot. Speaking of Sweetwater, thanks again for the DJI 2 yeah. Pocket Pro. That definitely came in clutch. Oh and all the B-roll that you have seen in this video, 
that was it. Sweetwater, you rule. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. So with that said, let us know down below what brand are you excited to see new gear from the most this year? Yeah, let us know down below with a comment. There's a ton of brands releasing new stuff and we'd love to know what you're interested in checking out. So uh, thanks and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks guys, love you.